Today I've got this pretty interesting problem involving finite sequences from a Leningrad math contest. So let's dive into the statement of this problem. So we say a finite sequence a1, a2, a3, all the way up to an is p balanced if for all j and k between 1 and p we have the following equality. So AK plus AK plus P plus AK plus 2P and so on and so forth is equal to AJ plus AJ plus P plus AJ plus 2P and so on and so forth. And since this is a finite sequence, this is always going to be a finite sum. So you just stop when you run out of terms. So now let's look at the problem. So we wanna suppose that the sequence A1, A2 up to A50 is P balanced for the following primes. So P is equal to three, five, seven, 11, 13, and 17. And our goal is to find a closed form for A sub N. Now, before we look at a solution, I'm just gonna look at a real quick example to get our heads wrapped around what this notion of P balanced is. So let's say we've got a sequence of five numbers. So A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. So that's gonna be two balanced if A1 plus A3 plus A5 is equal to A2 plus A4. And in fact, that's the only condition. So this would be like J equals one and K equals two in the language of this over here. So a bunch of sequences will satisfy this rule. So notice the following sequence works. So we have 1, 5, 2, 1, 3. And that works because 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6. And 5 plus 1 is also equal to 6. So it's pretty easy to cook up an example of something that is P balanced for a single prime. So now let's see what it takes for something to be P balanced for this collection of primes. Okay, we just got done stating the problem and looking at an example. Now we're ready to look at a careful solution. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite techniques and that is the technique of generating functions. But since we've got a finite sequence here, it's really just a generating polynomial. So let's maybe go ahead and set A of X equal to the polynomial a1x plus a2x squared plus all the way up to a50x to the 50. So maybe before we even get started, I wanna make the following very, very obvious observation, and that is a evaluated at zero is equal to zero. Now, how can we see that? Well, notice we've got a factor of x everywhere. Okay, now somehow we wanna use this notion of P balanced for P three, five, seven, so on and so forth, along with this polynomial. And how can we do that? Well, we can do that using roots of unity. So let's suppose that omega P is a primitive P root of unity, in other words, a pth root of the number one. Now we could take a certain pth root of the number one to be like e to the i two pi over p. So I'll let you guys look up what it means to be a primitive root of unity. Maybe post in the comments so that if someone hasn't seen that definition, they can find it very, very easily. Okay. So it's probably going to follow that we need to look at omega 3, 5, 7, 11, so on and so forth. So let's just maybe plug this primitive third root of unity into our polynomial and see what happens. So we've got a omega 3. So notice that's gonna be a1 times omega 3 plus a2 times omega 3 squared plus a3 times omega 3 to the third power, but omega 3 to the third power is equal to 1. And then we have plus A4 omega 3 to the fourth power, 
but omega-3 to the fourth power is just omega-3 because it's a primitive third root of unity. So notice that the exponents are working modulo 3. And then we have plus a5 omega-3 squared plus a6. And then that's going to continue all the way down. So let's see what this will end at. So this line right here, which is everything with a coefficient of omega-3, is going to end at 49. So this is going to be plus a sub 49 times omega 3. And then this one is going to end at a sub 50 times omega 3 squared plus, and now this is going to be a sub 48 times omega 3 cubed, but that's just the number 1. Okay, great. But notice that we can combine all of these together. So A1 plus A4 all the way up to A49, we can put all those together. I'm gonna to put it together into the number C3. So we have C3 times omega-3. Then likewise, we can do that here. A2 plus A5 all the way up to A50. But since our sequence is three balanced, this sum is the same as this sum. So this is gonna be plus C3 times omega-3 squared. And then finally, we have that is added to C3. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. We can factor a C3 out, and we're left with 1 plus omega-3 plus omega-3 squared. But since omega-3 is a primitive third root of unity, we know that this is exactly equal to 0. Okay, so that tells us that we have two new roots for our polynomial A. We see that A omega 3 is equal to 0. And then likewise, we can play this entire game plugging in omega squared. So that'll give us a square here, and that'll give us a first power here. So all that will add up to zero as well. So that's our other root. A omega 3 squared is also equal to zero. Now I think we can see what's going to happen. So we'll actually get roots for all of these primitive roots of unity. So let's maybe summarize that at the top of the board and we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we set omega p equal to this pth root of unity. So e to the i 2 pi over p. We also saw that a of x, our polynomial built from our sequence, has roots of 0, omega 3, and omega 3 squared. So it has at least three roots. But via a parallel observation to what we did on the last board, it will also have roots omega 5, omega 5 squared, omega 5 cubed, omega 5 to the fourth. So again, that's just by plugging in omega-5 or omega-5 squared, so on and so forth. And seeing that we get the polynomial is equal to zero using this fact that it is five balanced. Now we can play this game for all of the primes on this list. So we've got omega-7 all the way up to omega-7 to the sixth. We've got omega-11 all the way up to omega 11 to the 10. We've got omega 13, all the way up to omega 13 to the 12. And finally, omega 17, all the way up to omega 17 to the 16. Okay, so let's see what we can do from there. Now we can count up the roots of this polynomial. So we've got a single root here, from just plugging in zero. So I'll just write in yellow the number of roots that each of these gives us. So we've got two roots here. We have four roots here, six here, 10 here, 12 here, and 16 here. So that gives us a total of at least, because there could be more, how many roots? Well, We've got 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 10 plus 12 plus 16. 
But now if you add those up, what do you get? Well, you in fact get the number 51. So there are at least a total of 51 roots. But look, we've got a polynomial that is only of degree 50. The fact that it's degree 50 means it has at most 50 roots. But we found 51 roots. So if we found 51 roots to a polynomial of degree 50, that means that polynomial must be equal to zero. So here we've got a of x is equal to just the zero polynomial. But that tells us that a sub n is equal to zero for all n from one to 50. Finishing up the final problem that we wanted to solve, and that's a good place to stop.